Hey folks, good morning and welcome to another episode of Motorcyclist MC Commute. Today we're going to be riding Ducati's 2021 Street Fighter V4S, but this isn't any ordinary Street Fighter V4S, if that you can even say that. This is a fully decked out Street Fighter with Ducati performance accessories to the tune of almost $48,000. Whoa! Let's swing a leg over it and tell you what it's like to ride. All right, folks, here it is, Ducati's 2021 Street Fighter B4 Dark Stealth Project Bike. This is Ducati's premier naked class bike. It came out as an all-new model based on the Panigale V4 for the 2020 model year. Look at those carbon fiber winglets. That's a $1,500 accessory look at those awesome folding levers right there that's another fifteen hundred dollars for that lever that lever these turn signals and that awesome rizoma twist off fuel camp draped in carbon fiber and magnesium yes those are forged magnesium wheels from marchesini forged magnesium wheels they weigh about one and a half pounds less than the forged alloy wheels on the Street Fighter V4S. We also have the Akrapovic titanium exhaust that drops 11 and a half pounds off the weight of this motorcycle, adds around 10 horsepower. And wait till you guys hear the sound of this thing. It is unbelievable. There's also a dry clutch conversion kit on the other side of the bike. Yes, Ducati was renowned for doing dry clutches in their old super bikes and this thing has a dry clutch and oh my god is it totally awesome we also have this premium accessory seat ducati performance this bike is forty-seven thousand, nearly forty-eight thousand dollars when you add up the cost of the vehicle which is around 25 and all the accessories forty-eight thousand dollars for this bike is it worth it let's find out all right, folks, a good old-fashioned mechanical key. Are you guys ready for this? Listen to that dry clutch and Akrapovic titanium racing exhaust. Now this is what a motorcycle is supposed to sound like. Now the ergonomics pack package on the Street Fighter V4 now that I've spent some time on it, I really like and appreciate this ergonomics package. These motorcycles are good for older guys like myself who like to whale, but kind of be comfortable too. And that's what the ergos on the Street Fighter V4 are all about. The handlebar has a nice bend to it. It's not too narrow, doesn't have too much rearward sweep the rise isn't too much it's a very well engineered handlebar the rider seat is about 0.7 inch taller than a standard street fighter with this ducati performance accessory seat i love this seat it has a lot of padding it is manufactured from a nice fabric it has a very nice appearance on it the only maybe bad thing is this seat has got a lot of grip to it so it's hard for me to move my my posterior around the cockpit in the corners you know if you're someone who likes to have a high grip seat you're gonna like it but it's got a little bit too much grip but i like how tall it is i like how thick and supportive and it's aesthetic I'm also a big fan of these Ducati accessory rear sets that they manufactured in partnership with Rizoma. These foot controls allow for position adjustment. Right now they are in the lowest setting, which I like. This bike gives me a high degree of comfort, yet still has enough cornering clearance when I'm getting some in on my favorite back road. Very comfortable ergonomics package on this Street Fighter V4S project bike. The only knock is if you're not a taller person, you might have a hard time 
touching the ground the seat height on this bike is right around 33 inches so it is a pretty tall motorcycle but I'm tall I'm six foot tall so I love it now despite this motorcycle employing a dry clutch the, the clutch mechanisms are actually very easy to use this hydraulic assist makes it easy to pull in the lever with two fingers. I like the clutch response. Now back in the day when Ducati was using dry clutches on its super bikes, the clutch mechanism was, God, they were just so, they were so vague feeling and had such heavy clutch lever pull. This, this dry clutch conversion is just, it works very well. I almost wonder why you'd ever want a wet clutch with based on just how good this thing operates obviously the noise of this dry clutch you could never pass sound and emission testing with this dry clutch just because it's so loud it's crazy loud but who cares I like the sound of it now this Street Fighter V4S is powered by Ducati's what's soon becoming legendary 1103cc V4 engine. This is the engine they debut, debuted for the 2018 model year with the Panigale Superbike. Now, I love this engine. I loved it from the moment I twisted the throttle on it at Valencia. This thing is just, it's classic Ducati. It's got loads of character, loads of sound, and loads of power. Basically what Ducati did is they took their L-twin, V-twin concept and multiplied it by two. So twice the power, twice the performance, twice the character, and I really like this engine. Now that I've been starting to spend some serious time on it, what I really appreciate the most is how civilized this engine can be. It's so civilized at lower RPMs, it's just very impressive how easy and mild-mannered the engine can be. Of course, when you're wailing on it near its 15,000 RPM redline, that's when things get really exciting. But to have an engine, to have a powertrain that's so versatile, that can give just an insane amount of power, yet still have good street manners and still be usable and still be relatively easy to ride, that is what's really impressive about this powertrain. Power's put back to the rear tire via a six speed transmission with up and down quick shifter and a chain final drive. I love the electronic programming on this quick shifter. It changes between each of the cogs very quickly. You just press on the lever, you don't have to use the clutch. Other electronic quick shifters sometimes have delayed programming. This one's very immediate. immediate. It feels very racy. And the entire electronics package on this Ducati Street Fighter V4 is pretty racy, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now, this particular Street Fighter V4S is rolling on Ducati's Marchesini forged magnesium wheels. So the standard Street Fighter V4 comes with cast alloy wheels. The V4S comes with forged alloy wheels. And this bike has forged magnesium wheels. And the wheels on this bike, they're about one, almost two pounds lighter than the forged alloy wheels. And even though it's only two pounds, it makes a big difference. Now the standard V4S weighs right around 439 pounds with a full 4.2 gallons of fuel. This Street Fighter V4S project bike weighs right around 425 pounds. It's about 14 pounds 
less than the standard V4S. And the way Ducati got the weight savings on this bike is the Acapulco exhaust that sheds around 11 pounds. These wheels are another almost two pounds and then some of the carbon fiber goodies. And this bike is crazy maneuverable, crazy maneuverable for a 425 pound bike. We spent some time riding this motorcycle on my favorite back road and it's just insane how good this bike handles. It turns quickly, it's relatively stable. The Ducati electronic suspension, Olin's semi-active suspension, it works really well. Some of the funky mid-stroke weirdness I experienced with the 2020 V4S, I don't feel that with this setup. To be fair, this bike is rolling on Pirelli's Diablo Super Corsa SP V3 tires versus the Diablo Rosso Corsa 2 tires that the standard Street Fighter V4S rolls on. But I'm really impressed with the suspension on this motorcycle. Now the semi-active suspension automatically adjusts damping in real time based on rider control input, i.e. brakes and throttle, and the dynamic of the vehicle measured by the IMU. And what I like about this bike is it actually has good compliance over bumps and over broken pavement. Ducati mo motorcycles, sport motorcycles, have historically always had terrible ride quality over bumps and terrible comfort in terms of suspension action on the street. But with this DES, they are able to get these bikes to ride so well on the street, yet still give a very good level of road holding on the track and when you're riding in the canyons. Now, we have this vehicle set up in dynamic mode, so the suspension is altering the compression and the rebound damping in real time, but I have set it up so the brake support, the fork support, the shock, all of these settings are maxed out. So it's on the most aggressive, slowest setting that it can have in dynamic mode. Now, I like to have it on the maximum setting because when it's in a lower setting, the bike is just a little bit too soft and fast for me. I like bikes that have good support, nice slow action in terms of compression and especially rebound. And when I put it in that maximum setting, I wouldn't say that the bike is still totally calm, but it is definitely more toward the suspension calibration, calibration spectrum that I value when I'm riding these motorcycles. Of course, this bike also offers fixed damping, so you can set up fixed damping settings if you like to, but honestly, this semi-active setup, once I put it in the most aggressive setting, it works really well for me. Now, these Street Fighter V4s are awesome because they have Ducati's Tour de Force in the electronics department. There's an extreme level of adjustability in these motorcycles. I'm running the highest power setting with the most aggressive throttle response. Ducati's done a really good job evolving their throttle response, the throttle response on this Panigale V4s and the Street Fighter V4s, and even the Multistrata V4 now is downright excellent. Now with this $5,500 Akrapovic titanium exhaust, a custom fuel ignition ECU map that includes parameters specifically for DWC, DTC, all of those, that mapping applies with this exhaust. And the, the mapping on this engine is just excellent. Now, 
Panigales that roll off the showroom floor, anything out of the, the Borgo Panigale factory in Italy always kind of has rough fuel mapping. But the mapping on this Street Fighter V4S is downright excellent. Very responsive engine tuning and throttle response on this bike. Yeah, love this thing. Got it, just this thing is so fun to accelerate on. Now, if Lucifer was alive, this is the motorcycle he would ride. It is just so extreme, so wild, so fast, so powerful, so charismatic. There are, are a lot of great naked bikes out there, but none of them ride up this thing. We rode this motorcycle after dark, and I really like the LED head beams on this bike. They throw out a good spread of light. It really allows you to ride this bike hard at night. But I do have a gripe that this bike needs cornering head beams. For $25,000, it should have cornering head beams, especially considering the insane handling performance of this bike. Ducati, for the love of God, add cornering headlights. Now, keeping tabs on everything is this 5-inch color TFT screen. The screen, the size is decent, but it could be a little bit larger. There are competitors out there that offer larger, crisper, more functional dash displays. Now, I like that this thing is loaded with, with settings and information, but the switch gear, the tactile function of the switch gear could be improved. When you're wearing gloves, it's hard to know if you depress something. And just the menu system and the amount of of doodads and displays is a little bit clunky. Ducati could definitely spend some time improving the user interface. Now to be fair, they have made great strides and this UI is better than previous editions, but still they could do some improvement in the UI. Now right now we have black font over white background, but at night this screen will automatically turn over and be like our iPhone words. Dark background with white numbers, which I really like. Riding around in top gear at 672 miles per hour, we're pulling right around 5,500 RPMs, which is crazy. We still have another 9,000 RPMs left to go before this thing hits red line. Just crazy power band on this motorcycle. But in top gear, engine doesn't vibrate accessory excessively. Engine has real pleasing demeanor. It doesn't vibrate excessively. The view from the rear view mirrors is pretty good. <coughs> Excuse me. Now engine heat. We haven't ridden this motorcycle in dense traffic or in stop and go traffic but based on my experience with the Panigale V4 this engine throws off some serious heat this isn't a motorcycle you're gonna be want to ride on a hot summer day through LA traffic to be fair Ducati has added cylinder cylinder act cylinder deactivation when the engine coolant is over 160 Fahrenheit the rear two cylinders deactivate when the motorcycle stopped. That helps eliminate some engine heat at a stop. It also decreases engine noise. So allows you to ride a little bit more inconspicuously. Yes! Yes! I love this thing. Now, California has a noise law. Vehicles are not allowed to admit over 95 decibels of sound. This Street Fighter V4S with the 5500 dollars Acropovic titanium exhaust definitely exceeds 95 decibels. But I'm not telling anyone. I love the sound of this motorcycle. Brakes. 
this Street Fighter V4S rolls on radial mount Brembos with a radial mount Brembo master cylinder. It also has these cool accessory levers. These levers are foldable, foldable. They have nice big adjustment key. I love these levers. They have a ton of adjustability. They feel really nice. The brakes on this motorcycle are downright they're unbelievable. They are so good. Especially when you max out the brake support setting with the Odin semi-active suspension. It really allows you to use these brakes aggressively. Now, not only is the actual braking hardware of this bike awesome, but I gotta hand it to Ducati and their ABS programming. Ducati's really led the charge in advanced and aggressive ABS programming. Now, even in its most restrictive setting, ABS-3, you have to be a very, very, <coughs> excuse me, experienced rider to even have the ABS intervene at a level where that's actually gonna hold you back. The ABS program on this motorcycle is quasi-race ABS program. If you're a B or a C level racer, the ABS programming on this bike will be good enough for you to compete on. It's that good. Other major motorcycle manufacturers, even sport bike manufacturers, even super bike manufacturers, don't have as good of ABS programming out of the box as Ducati. Good job, Ducati. Don't think we're not paying attention. Other electronic goodies, we've got DTC, Ducati Traction Control, Ducati Healy Control, Engine Brake Control. We have it in Engine Brake Control Mode 1, which is the most amount of engine braking. I like the most amount of engine braking when I ride these bikes on the street. Now, this dry clutch, this $3,500 dry clutch conversion also allows you to fit different diaphragm springs you can even have more or less engine braking this is mechanical engine braking not the electronic engine braking that EBC controls by adding fuel to the engine during deacceleration now the electronics on this motorcycle what I like about it the, mo the most is just how much versatility you have if you're a very high level rider you can really pull back the electronics and that allows this motorcycle to be ridden unencumbered conversely if you're someone who's new to riding even though you really shouldn't be new to riding if you're riding the street fighter v4s just because it's such a high performance naked bike you can still dial back the power dial on the the traction control and and put in a setting that can allow you to ride this motorcycle relatively safely and that's what I like about this bike so much. Now we've got to hand it to Ducati. They've made great strides in the fit and finish department. The fit and finish of this motorcycle is definitely improving. I love the machining on the frame headstock, the handlebar, these fasteners Ducati uses, the switch gear, everything is improving and Ducati is definitely making great strides in the fit and finish. Now for many years they were very far behind a lot of the big Japanese OEs but it's good to see Ducati closing that gap and making high higher quality vehicles for us to ride. Now, this Street Fighter V4S has Ducati's accessory heated grips right here. You push this button and the heated grips are on. It's around $350 for that feature. And I like these heated grips because they get hot in the hottest, highest setting. These heated grips really pump out some heat. A lot of other motorcycle manufacturers, they do heated grips, but the heated grips don't pump out the heat like the set on this Street Fighter V4S. It really makes riding in cooler weather that much more comfortable. 
love the brakes, love the power, love the everything on this bike. This bike just kicks butt. This thing's obviously surprisingly civilized here in the city, but God, when you ride this thing on your favorite back road, this bike is just exhilarating to ride. It is absolutely exhilarating to ride. This Street Fighter V4 makes me remember why I liked old school Ducati Superbikes so much because they just were so insanely fun to ride. They had good power, good character, a charisma that other vehicles just don't have. And this Street Fighter V4S brings us back to Ducati's core roots and then some. Not only does it have Ducati's core fundamentals and roots, but it's got just an insane amount of performance, an insane amount of, of electronic adjustability, and I just really like this bike. Fuel mileage, we forgot to touch on the MPGs. Now, if you can just lug this engine and not really get on the pipe, this thing will get pretty decent fuel mileage, right around the high 30s. But realistically, when you're riding this bike like it's meant to be ridden in the canyons, you're gonna get, you're gonna get fuel mileage in the high 20s, low 30s. So if you can just short shift it, lug the engine, not rev her out, you're gonna get high 30s. For everyone else, you're gonna get high 20s to low 30s. But still, it's nice that you have the choice, aka your right wrist. Well, folks, there it is. Ducati's totally awesome 2021 Street Fighter V4S project bike decked to the moon with Ducati performance accessories. Now, in the bike world, this thing is a big deal. We get to ride a lot of cool bikes all the time, but this thing really leaves its mark on me. I like riding this thing a lot. Let's do some Q&A real quick for the fans. All right, let's do some Q&A real quick. Straight to the top here. How is there over 20,000 invest in this other than the exhaust and clutch bike looks stock? That's a great point. Well, we've got the $5,000 magnesium forged wheels. We have the $1,500 carbon fiber wings that generate 60 some pounds of downforce at 160 some miles per hour. We have the awesome levers, the carbon fiber everywhere, the seat, those awesome rear sets. There is a lot of stuff on this motorcycle. Some of it's kind of silly, like the carbon fiber on the instrument panel. Some of it's kind of not, like those awesome precision machined rear sets. But the great thing about Ducati performance accessories is you pick your poison. You pick whatever you want in the catalog, you put it on, you don't put it on. Everything has Ducati's manufacturer warranty behind it. Other than looks, how does this machine compare with the KTM 1290 Duke R or R when it comes to riding on the straight? Well, I haven't ridden the RR 1290, but I've ridden the current modern 1290, and that bike's really nice, but this bike, no bike accelerates like this bike. There is no other naked bike made in any displacement category that accelerates like this vehicle you're looking at it. And that's all you need to know. Are super nakeds a paradox because to actually use them that, that much HP you need a fairing? Well, 
kind of that's what I always thought but now that I'm old and my body doesn't bend like it does on a sport bike these motorcycles are really awesome because they're just more comfortable they're more comfortable and you can still whale and maybe not whaling quite to sport bike level but 94 percent there and you're comfortable and that's why these naked bikes are cool they also look awesome i mean just like imagine pulling up at the spot on this motorcycle like this thing is a looker all right folks one more question monster 1200 s or street fighter uh, that is a no-brainer this bike. I'm not a big monster 1200 guy, but a street fighter guy before street fighter guy I definitely am all right folks that wraps up today's MC commute review on the 2021 street fighter v4 s project bike would I spend my 47,000 almost $48,000 as tested money on this bike I wouldn't spend that, but I definitely would buy a Street Fighter V4. I'd probably even get a V4S. I'm really feeling this Olean's semi-active suspension. And you know what? I would absolutely spring $3,500 for that dry clutch. You know what? I absolutely would spend $1,300 on those rear sets. Now, that Acropovic pipe is totally awesome but $5,500 is a little bit steep for it and it's just so loud. I feel like if I owned this motorcycle, I would get arrested or I'd be running from cops on a weekly basis, one of the two. So I probably wouldn't do that, but I definitely would pony up money for the dry clutch and those rear sets and the heated grips and the seat. There's a lot of things on this bike that I would plop down my cash for because they these components just work really well. All right, folks, make sure to log on to MotorcyclistOnline.com. That's where all of my reviews and content in the written form goes. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Please thumbs it down if you didn't. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.